be ready 5 seconds IFSC is a premier center through which the global financial companies are coming to India we are seeing a rapid change in terms of kind of usages through which IFSC is benefiting all of us we have seen very good results a number of 21 banks have got licenses total banking asset sizes have increased by more than 25 billion us dollars total banking transaction has crossed 156 billion us dollars two stock exchanges have also been opened with daily trading value of index derivatives of 13.14 billion us dollars and daily trade value of currency derivatives are at the level of 13 million us dollars commodity derivatives are at 174 million us dollars so the footfall the extent of business the coverage and the kind of generation in the activity all are very distinctive for all of us to see sir a lot of members have spoken about virtual digital currency a point was raised that the government is giving a mixed signal and there is no clarity this was raised by quite a lot of honorable members i just want to say that there is no confusing signal we are very clear and the consultation is going on whether we want to regulate it fully or we want to regulate it to some extent or we want to totally ban it after the consultation is concluded the result will come out but till then we are taxing it also because there is a lot of reported activity happening a lot of transactions are happening and from the way the concerns are being expressed by several members there is definitely a common place knowledge that a lot of exchanges are happening people are putting money people are taking money people are creating assets and assets are being sold and bought so obviously the government made its position clear saying we shall tax the money being generated out of it and that is why we have come out with the proposal to tax it at 30% and the tds has also been brought in as always tds is mode for tracking it is not an additional tax it is not a new tax it is a tax which is going to help people tr- to track it but at the same time the person who has paid 1% tds can always reconcile it with the total tax that he has to pay to the government he can subtract it if he has paid more or add it if he has to pay additional tax so there is no new taxation because of tds the tds principle has always been the same and that probably is also one of the reasons why the tax base has widened not here only on the digital side but in general the tax base has been widening earlier 
we had only about 5 crore and odd people who were paying taxes in 2014. We are now touching 9.1 crore people and that is because we are able to find the money trail of people who seem to be spending money, who file assessments sometimes but they do not pay even if they are expected to pay. So, TDS is always a legitimate way through which we are tracking the transactions and therefore it is helpful to widen the tax base. Sir, on the strict provisions of the GST, a honorable member had raised a question saying these provisions lead to imprisonment as a punishment for mistaken entries. I would like to clarify here that there is only one section which is section 132 in the CGST Act which provides for imprisonment in specific cases and the specific cases are evasion of tax, availing fraudulent input tax credit, deliberately tampering financial records and giving false information with intent to evade payment of tax. These are the specific items under which after proper adjudication, imprisonment is done if it is necessary to be taken as a step. Imprisonment is done only in cases of serious nature such as these and not for minor mistakes or wrong entries. So, in normal cases of compliances where records are maintained and where furnishing of returns happen, no imprisonment is ever invoked. Further, the GST law also does not provide for imprisonment in cases where the amount of tax evaded or the income tax concessions availed and utilized is less than the threshold limit of rupees 1 crore. So, anything below it is anyway not going to be taken up for imprisonment. These provisions were made as per the recommendation of the GST Council where the states are also equally present and in fact that one line is actually the answer or my response for every suggestion which has come about GST. Sir, PMLA and ED have naturally attracted a lot of attention and some observations have also been made by honorable members. I am in particular referring to arrests made under PMLA without even registration of a FIR. The ED always comes in following the trial of the main offence which is taken up by some other FIR and post that when the trial goes on and you realize that money has been laundered, the PMLA can be invoked. Then comes the ED. So, the ED is never the first one in the scene. If you see the ED, be sure that there is something else already with you. I would like to assure the honorable members that the faceless assessment has been well received. People are relieved that they do not have to go to the offices. But if there are amendments, it is more because we just want to ensure that there is no nuisance. Where eventually after the faceless assessment has gone through stage 1 and stage 2 and actually there is a need for some personal interaction at the final stages, we would want to come in. 
There we make the small amendments. So these amendments have been proposed in the bill to ensure that the taxpayer who wants to have a hearing at the eventual final stage having gone through everything he gets a hearing through video conferencing